All righty, welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Mark Caesar. Uh, I am the host of the Financial Freedom Through Apartment Investing, a uh, proud affiliate of the GOB Network of Apartment Investors. And today we have with us two lovely ladies, uh, Kelly D. Stinton, the Potty Princess, and Leslie Pollard of SAS Conserve. Um, just a brief bio on both of the ladies. Kelly is the national leader of increasing NOI and boosting asset values on multi multifamily properties through water efficiencies. Passionate about preserving our world's most precious resource, water. The Potty Princess nickname caught, a, caught traction four years ago through my continued com commitment of bringing awareness, education, and support across the country to multifamily property owners relative to the financial and environmental impact of all toilets and their properties. In 2019, I saved multi-property owners, well, she saved multi-property owners over $2 million on their water and sewer bills, coupled with reducing water consumption by just over 200 million gallon, gallons that will fill 303 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Wow. With 2020 numbers trending over double what they did in 2019. As for Leslie, uh, she worked with the commercial real estate industry as a service provider for over 20 years. SAS certified and focusing on the multifamily and hospi hospitality industry, bringing water conservation to top of the mine investors, offered investors an annualized savings of over $1,240,416 with over 97,316,327 of gallons of water saved. Those are very specified numbers. <laughs> Well, we ladies, are numbers nerds, <laughs> I, <laughs> and they're growing every day. Every day, those numbers are getting bigger and bigger. We have to update them all the time. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, ladies, thank you so much for jumping on and speaking on this platform. I appreciate you um, sharing your time with us, and the floor is yours. Thank you. And I will give you guys sharing capabilities. Let's see. Madness. Leslie, <clears throat> you want me to drive? Please, absolutely. All right, perfect. Thank you all so much for, for having us this evening. We're super excited to be here. Please excuse us for uh, our little technical issues earlier, but I think we're off to a good start. Mark, thank you so much for that great introduction. So um, a little bit as I share my screen here, um, let me see if I can get us into, uh, presentation mode. Um, so what we're going to share with you guys tonight is all things water conservation. So what I love about this is uh, the fact that many property owners out there are missing out on an opportunity to be able to improve the cash flow on their properties. And be able to do that through the channel of water, water conservation, water efficiency programs that actually perform very well in multifamily properties. So this certainly has, um, you know, taken on a um, more of a critical component as we're hearing about water and sewer rates increasing, um, you know, on a regular basis all across the country, but even more so in the economic environment that we're in right now, where you know a property, you might be dealing with rent delinquencies, right? Um, you might be um, you know, faced with some of those rent increase headwinds where you're not able to increase rents per your original business plan that was implemented um, because of your resident base and maybe the current you know, delinquency ratios that are occurring. So what are some of those components that you can focus on where you do have control? And believe it or not, you have the most control over your water and sewer expense line. And just being able to be equipped with what those types of solutions are um, and how you can model them is really what's going to fit best for your property and how to make your investors super happy. So what we wanna share with you tonight is 
you know, just some data points behind why, you know, water is so important, why it really should be um, part of your underwriting plan as you all are evaluating properties. And, you know, what are some of the best practices out there? Okay, can you guys see my screen? Give me a little thumbs up there. So mm -hmm. I know, all right, fab, good. All right, you would think that, you know, after all the time that we've, that we've spent on Zoom over the past year and a half that we should all be like the subject matter experts on Zoom, but I'm still, you know, I'm still on a lot of Zooms where, uh, where we're like, hey, you're still on mute, take yourself off mute. <laughs> Oh. It's a lot of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I've been guilty of that a few times myself. I, I'll own that. So just to share with you um, a little bit about SAS, just to, you know, build some context here. So SAS is also known as Sustainability Solutions. And that is a lot. That's a big mouthful. So we go by the acronym SAS. So we are a nationwide service provider. Um, we were founded in 1997 and we focus on supporting, you know, really the multifamily communities, affordable housing communities with reducing their water and sewer expense line anywhere from 20 to 40%. And we've even, even most recently seen those reductions closer to the 50%. What we do is we help support through the financial analysis, and we'll go a little bit deeper into that around the numbers and how we're getting to these numbers. But we will start with you um, pre-LOI and run some very soft numbers for you. And then we walk, we walk through your journey um, alongside you. So should you move into a contract stage, then um, we will walk along that with you through our project management where we have our crews that come in and they will actually remove all those inefficient fixtures and then they will install all of the um, ultra high efficient technology fixtures that's related to everything toilets and shower heads and aerators, okay? So again, this, this ties back to, you know, when we're running as multifamily operators, we're having to run, you know, our, you know, our, our property like a business. So you're going to boost the value of the property by increasing the, the income, but also by decreasing the expenses, right? So let's take, for example, here, um, and I'll go into this next slide. You know, if you take an example of like a $50,000 reduction on the expense line, and that's for kind of a larger property. So maybe a $50,000 expense line year one um, on that water and sewer expense line. And you're running at a six and a half cap, which cap rates are compressing all across the country. So if, if, if I found a six and a half cap today, I'd be like, oh, let, let's look, let's pencil this. Um, but at a six and a half cap, that's $769,000 asset value boost, which is just incredible. Is what if you took a bridge loan on a property today? Okay. And you, and you decided to go with the bridge loan product because, you know, you're able to wrap your CapEx into the bridge loan, well, guess what you need to do uh, depending on how your bridge loan is written? Guess what you need to do in year two or year three? You need to exit. You guys already know this. You need to exit the bridge loan. So you're going to refinance. So talk about having that opportunity to increase that asset value in as little as two to three years can you imagine the cash out that you're going to get back to your investors and then you refinance? And depending on what your model is, if you decide to, you know, take on a new investor pool or, or if you decide just to, you know, go uh, a full cycle on the property at that point. But super exciting opportunities. And that's where we want to do is through SAS is be able to give back you know, in this community through education, because there are very few resources out there for multifamily operators to 
break down in a very simple format how these types of solutions can truly impact you. So this is a great example here, and I'm gonna move my little windows out. So right here are some you know, case studies that we've done all across the country. And you're going to notice here that there's a significant difference in you know, the annual savings and the asset value boost across the country. And that is really due to you know, the types of fixtures that were originally on the property, like the vintage of the property. And then also, what does that water and sewer rate look like in that area? And it does vary. So I'm going to turn this over to Leslie and she's going to walk us through these really exciting you know, case studies, which by the way, we get to do this every day. And that's what makes it so exciting because as my personal passion of saving water, you know, I call it our world's most precious resource. You know, I'm fulfilled in that moment, but I'm helping fulfill, you know, our clients because we're able to increase that cash flow and everybody likes cash flowing properties. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And it's fun too, because if, let's say Mark, today you sent me over what you sent and he sent me over a copy of, you know, the T12 and the OM and I get to go to work. So I get to uncover the savings and it's really fun. So this just kind of gives you, like Kelly said, three examples. Um, you can see that the first one's Irving, you've got Atlanta, you've got Cleveland. Um, Atlanta and Cleveland, by the way, are crazy high on their water and their sewer rates. Um, so it's kind of the perfect storm because you've got these locations, you've got 300 units, 800 units, and 191 units. And um, how, we, how we come up with these calculations is we take what you give us, which is typically the OM, the T12, um, but really we, we take the, the unit mix, the unit count, as well as the, the city where you live, and we put it into our calculator and we come up with conservative numbers for you. So this is going to be a conservative estimate for you to show you how we got these three different scenarios um, with these three different savings. So you can see the first one, Irving, you've got a 54% water reduction on 300 units. Um, we're able to save the 57,000 with a 950,000 um, the asset value boost. Um, same with Atlanta, same concept, a different environment, different water rates, different sewer rates. Uh, different capex. So this is what we can do for you, where we can come in and take the information you gave us and take this off your plate. This is something that we don't expect you to know or have the time or the energy to try to figure out whenever you're trying to figure out ways to reduce expenses. We don't expect you to, to take the time and the energy to do this and we do it for you and it's free. It's a free analysis. So what we're hoping is that every single deal that you're looking at, and like Kelly said before LOI, we want you to just send us over the information, let us do the analysis for you, and this is kind of a, a snapshot of what we could provide you back. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Exactly. And, you know, in this, you know, in this environment today, offers are getting really competitive. Um, I was just... Uh, talking to an investor uh, last week and um, he had, um, he did not make it to best and final on a property in South Carolina, but there were over 50 offers on that property. Okay. So there's a couple of things that are concerning. You know, you have, you know, all of, you know, you have a much more competitive environment when you're submitting offers. So, you know, you need to be able to have those tools to where you're able to, you know, polish your off your offer, sharpen the pencil, right? Without making the margins super skinny, because that's the other part is that I, I see on both sides. So I'm an investor myself. So I evaluate um, a lot of these analytics and anytime I'm looking to invest in a property, you know, I'm looking at it from a different, you know, set of lenses versus this side. Um, imagine there's a lot of operators out there that they get so emotionally tied to their offer on a property that they're going to do anything they can just to win it because they're tied to it emotionally. And that 
becomes very dangerous for those investors, right, that might be part of this, um, or for you personally as the operator, because, you know, what you wrote, you know, is it really going to be able to work? And, um, you know, just because you got, you know, all excited about, well, it's only, you know, I only have to sharpen my pencil another $20,000. Well, where are you going to get that $20,000 from? You know, so this here is a perfect opportunity to come out of the gate. And by the way, guys, these types of projects typically have a return on investment of about 12 to 14 months. This is the fastest return on your CapEx investments today on your projects. So most business plans that we see that are going in, you know, you're, you might, you know, do some exterior upgrades. Well, that's not going to, you know, increase rent, um, but you're going to go in and run interior upgrades potentially where you're, you know, addressing flooring, you're addressing countertops, backsplashes, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And you're not hitting that entire property all at once. When, when you go in for those interior renovations, you're touching on all the vacant units typically, and then you're renovating the other units as they turn. What we do at SAS, we come in and we complete the entire property up front. So what happens is we're typically one of the first uh, contractors on the property post-close because the owners recognize that within the first 30 to 60 days, they're immediately going to start to see the improvement on that expense line and be able to make for some really happy investors. Kelly, I think it's really important that um, you, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I think today what you were talking about with, you know, right now in some of these areas, the water and the sewer rates might look reasonable you know, because we, let's say that we do an analysis for you and, and right now the rates are not crazy high, but what Kelly was talking to our team today about was just the overwhelming, the obvious, the, the what's coming down the pipeline is that these, would you, would you talk more about kind of what's to come with the water and the sewer rates? Yes. So we're seeing this and we've been seeing this for the last 10 years, the water and sewer rates across the country are actually outpacing the rate of inflation, which is really interesting considering um, where we are today with the rate of inflation. But what we really need to keep up with is the fact that um, a lot of these utility providers, a lot of the water utility providers across the country, they are really dealing with some grappling infrastructure due to increased demand and decreased supply of the water. And they have to address this much quicker than what was on the original uh, water authority plan. So um, Houston is a prime example um, because it is all over the news down there right now. Um, Houston is seeing such a significant increase on the demand that they're expecting the demand down there to um, increase five times the amount that it is today over the next 50 years. So that may not sound like a whole lot, but when the supply is already well below where it should be and the demand is increasing that much, what are they going to do? First on the infrastructure, but then addressing the supply. So one of the items that's going through the city council in Houston right now, there was a study, uh, there was a water study that was done back at the end of 2019. And um, they paused it last year because of COVID, but now the city is proceeding forward with, uh, with the approvals and the plan for the water and sewer rates. And what we're looking at, it's a five-year progressive plan. Over the course of five years in the city of Houston, the water rate is going to increase 51%. The sewer rate is going to increase 66%. This is very alarming. Um, this is alarming for 
multifamily property owners that may, may have written you know, and closed on their property last year, and they didn't write those types of increases into their budget. Or what if you have um, a sponsor right now in that area that is not as sophisticated to check out some of you know, these types of resources like SAS or to reach out to the local water authority to see what their rates for the future are going to be? What if they underwrite a property and in three years, at year three, they're at the 24% increase, but they only wrote in a 3% increase year over year. What is that going to do to the NOI on the property? So we're getting ready to share some educational pieces out there um, because this particular topic, specifically in Houston, um, you know, as well as North Texas has um, taken on a significant focus and I wanna make sure that we are sharing the education. So this piece right here is a prime example. Um, this, and I love this pie chart. And by the way, we source these numbers from the EPA and WaterSense. And, and then through our data also, we validate this. So the EPA numbers that are out there through the WaterSense uh, website are spot on. Um, so I feel really good about you know, where they're projecting. But this is a great um, you know, picture as to how is the water being consumed on a multifamily property. So 24% of your water bill is being attributed to the toilets on the property. Because on average, each person is going to flush a toilet three to five times a day. So if you have an inefficient fixture that, you know, maybe, you know, might be 10, 20, 30 years old, maybe even more than that, that's a lot of water. And there's, you know, products on the market today that uh, allow for those efficiencies so that you can manage that. And this ties back to, you know, reducing the demand on the supply that we have available today. You know, and 6% of the total leaks on a property, so they say that 13% of the water bill is attributed to leaks, all right? Now, 6% of those leaks are actually attributed to leaky toilets. So those little rubber flappers that sit in the tank of your toilet, um, those will corrode over time and they create what we call the silent leak because the average lifespan on those flappers is only about 12 to 24 months. So we've seen this where there's toilets that will leak out in excess of 100 gallons a day. So even if you have like a 20 unit property or a 50 unit property or a 500 unit property, you scale that across, that's a lot of wasted water. And especially, you know, if you are, you know, focusing in on affordable housing, what are you doing to manage that to protect the cash flow on the property? So then your second piece is that 20% of that consumption is tied to the showers. Is the EPA states that each of us run the shower on average about 10 minutes a day. Um, if you're my teenagers, you're probably running it longer than that because they seem to like to turn the shower on and then they walk away and I, I don't know, and then they come back. Um, so that's why I have like the most efficient shower heads built in their shower. So when their shower temperature hits, a, a, when their shower hits a certain temperature, it seizes to like a drip. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about them draining all these tanks and wasting all this precious water that we have. But the thing that I found is a lot of owners that we've worked with, they've asked the question, like Kelly, you know, we don't have the budget to, to do everything. So I think we're just gonna go with the least invasive installation. And so we're just, gonna, we're just going to put, you know, shower heads in and maybe some of those faucet aerators. And we'll customize whatever needs to be done for the property. But what we have found is that 25% of the residents are removing the shower heads and they're going to Home Depot or Lowe's and they're buying those handheld shower heads or those you know, giant rainfall shower heads. And you don't have any compliance to be able to drive what they're using. 
you're not able to write that into the lease that they can't remove it. They can remove it. They just have to reinstall it before they move out. And so I always joke about this. I have yet to see a resident remove a toilet. And if they are removing the toilet, you've got bigger issues <laughs> on your property. So again, this, this is really a great breakdown as to why, you know, the water conservation and having a focus around that water and sewer expense line, you know, really should take priority for you. So as we go into this, you know, last year, as everybody came back into shelter in place, you know, um, and especially, you know, over there on the East Coast, it just seemed like everybody was home a lot longer. We saw properties increase their consumption three to five times. And that really started to hit, you know, that expense line for these property owners especially on those all bills paid. So it's like, oh my goodness, what do we do? Because our water usage was being spread out at all those different places that we were visiting, you know, throughout the day. Well, now all of a sudden everybody's home and dynamics are changing too. You know, not as many employees are going back into the office. And then you also have, you know, a lot of students that are now, you know, they are now uh, remote students, they're all online. So, this is going to stay, you know, on the forefront. So just to give you guys an example here, you know, oops, really focusing, let me back up here, focusing on, you know, your toilets. The EPA states that the average gallon per flush toilet across multifamily properties in the United States is 2.76 gallons per flush. If your property was built before 1985, you're going to have a three and a half gallon per flush toilet in there, unless there's been any significant interior upgrades. So we have the ability to take you down to 0.8 gallons per flush. And I'm sure that some of you are like, oh wow, that's not a whole lot of water. Um, but the technology has changed. And what we have done is, the manufacturer that we've partnered with, they actually re-engineered the toilet so that they're able to flush the same amount of waste with reduced amount of water and still carry the furthest line carry of any other water sense certified toilet on the market today. So you lose that stigma of that double flushing and everything that everybody talks about. You know, not all toilets are created equal. And so that's all I recommend here is make sure that you're doing your research as to what types of efficient toilets that you're placing on the property. Um, or reach out to us, right? Because that's really where our focus is and where our expertise is. And again, you know, that second, you know, big water consumption component is your shower heads. You know, the average shower head across the country that's installed on multifamily properties is two and a half gallons per minute. What if you could install, you know, a shower head that runs at, you know, 1.5 or even 1.25, but still provide the resident with the same experience as a two and a half gallon per minute shower head. So these are some pieces that we go in and we, we focus around those, those financials for you. I was just going to say, um, the, the good thing here is that we're not having to change. And you might've already said this, Kelly, but I'm going to repeat it because I think it's worth it. Um, I just, that, that we're, we're not having to change the tenant's behavior. This yes. is in lieu of, you know, we've heard some people offer a $50 gift card if they see it leak or, you know, if they're trying all these different things on the property management side to get the tenants to change their behavior and, cons and conserve water. Um, and it's really hard to manage that. So this takes its place. This manages yes. the water for them. Yep, exactly. How many times have we heard, you know, it, well, at least I did growing up and a lot of my colleagues did too from our parents, you know, when you're brushing your teeth, turn off the water, turn off the water, turn off the water, turn off the water, but you never do it. Um, it is really hard to drive that with your residents. So instead, you know, you have the option to be a little more innovative with some of the solutions that are out there. But then also 
share that education back to the residents about why you're implementing these types of programs. And that helps to, you know, tie everything together for you. So this is a fantastic slide and you guys are going to want to jot down these states that are on the right hand side here. Um, as you all are evaluating properties. And this is really Leslie's expertise. So I'm going to turn it over to Leslie to speak on this. So we have lots of investors in these that are located in New York, like you, Mark, that are looking in Georgia or looking to buy some properties in the hot market of Florida. And so these are just, I mean, you wanna talk about the perfect storm for us to be able to come in and save the day, these are the areas that we can really come in and make a huge impact water-wise. So if you're ever looking at any of these areas, we just ask that you, I mean, we ask you to send us for all areas because there's some, even some places and, you know, it, that surprises me every day. Someone will send me, um, someone sent me something the other day for um, a place in Pennsylvania I'd never heard of before. And I looked up the water rates and they were just, ridiculously high. So, but these are the ones that we know through and through are going to be really high water and sewer rates. And that's where we can, like I said, make a ding in the, in those bills. Yeah. And, you know, quite often, you know, many will hear, oh, well, the water rates, they're, they're fine. They're, they're not that bad. What a lot of cities are doing now is they're putting the rate increases on the sewer. And like Tulsa is a perfect example. The sewer rate in Tulsa is three times the water rate. So when we're running our analysis, we are looking at both the water rate and the sewer rate because what we focus on with the toilets, the shower heads and the aerators, that's, that's going to hit both of those, those channels. But we also back out any of the fixed rates. So like your, your meter charge, or there might be a base rate for usage, we back that out because implementing a water efficiency program is only going to be, it's only going to impact on, on your water bill based upon consumption. So that's another piece, you know, how we're, you know, more specific on the numbers and not just taking an average in that area. But I spoke, you know, I spoke to this a little bit earlier about, you know, the infrastructures now are really grappling and it's really expensive to, you know, change out the sewer. And Atlanta is a prime example with the Atlanta watershed. Um, there are certain areas around there that, um, you know, are in excess of, you know, $26 per thousand gallons for both the water and sewer combined. And you compare that to a Dallas average of like $10.16 per thousand gallons. So that's, that's a big delta, right? And if you're evaluating the T12 and you're looking at just the total amount for the water sewer each month, there's more to that story. We like to look at the actual bills as we get further, further down the path to evaluate the consumption because you might be looking at it and go, okay, well, you know, $3,000 a month for water and sewer, you know, on the T12, that's running pretty average. So there's no issues here. But then when we dig a little bit deeper and we look at the actual water and sewer bill and we evaluate the consumption, that's where we're able to determine how healthy is that property on efficiency is we know that on average, the average person is going to use about 66 gallons of water per day. And we typically will strive with our programs to streamline that property to average out more of that 30 to 33 gallons per day. So that's where we're talking about that 30 to 60% reduction in consumption. And also why she's changing slides, um, let us do that work for you. I mean, it's free. We don't charge you anything to do these analysis. So if you, if you just want to throw it to us, throw us the T12 and say, water and sewer is all yours. That's where, and Kelly is such, she's so data-driven. She's such a numbers person. 
that we take it to the next level. We take it to levels we probably even shouldn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember, we've there's some of these water utilities that work off of tiered rates, and I'm sure you guys have seen this. And that alone can just be mind boggling where you're just like, I'm never going to figure this out. And Leslie and I worked on one together a couple of weeks ago. And it was like, we got to the end of it to test all the numbers and to make sure, because the tiered system was so confusing. Yes. And I'm like, if it's confusing for us, I can't even imagine what it's like for our operators. They're just like, oh, we're yeah. done. By yeah. the time Leslie and I got through with it, we're like, oh, it, yes, it matches. Everything reconciles. We're like high-fiving all over yes. the office. Like, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, those are the little wins that, mm -hmm. that get us excited because I'm like, yes, our numbers that it's, it's right. It works. And we find discrepancies on water bills too. So you send us your water bills. We go to the published rates that everybody pays the same, right? Like you don't get a discount or you can't shop it like you can your electricity bill, but we found discrepancies. So even just letting us see it to do the analysis for you, that's kind of partner we want to be is that upfront, we're doing all the work for you. So you can really see the value. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is one of my favorite slides as well. Um, and this is just a small snippet of what I like to call the, the plumbing fixture hall of fame, like the, you know, the naughty potties. <laughs> so um, this, is, this is where we've been on properties. One of our colleagues in the last three years, he has personally walked over 40,000 bathrooms. I mean, imagine that, right? I mean, that's incredible. So we've seen a lot. We've been on the front lines quite a bit. And these are some great examples of, of what to look for. So like over here on, on the left side, if you see a toilet like this with a larger tank, yeah, you're flushing, you're definitely flushing money down the toilet, okay? And I love this right here with the green arrow in the middle because you have this beautiful, you know, granite, um, you know, van countertop with a new vanity. They've got new flooring in there. They put in a new bathtub surround and everybody's so excited about posting videos on social media and, you know, celebrating all these successes. And so I, I like to celebrate alongside. And so I, I go through and I, I flip through the pictures or I get on the videos and I point this one out because I was so excited um, about this property. And um, the owner was walking down the hallway and I'm like, oh, he's almost to the bathroom, almost to the bathroom. What's going to be in there? And he goes in there and I'm like, oh, that toilet is 44 years old. And so I'm like, so I just put, you know, like a little message. I'm like, is this all bills paid? And so, you know, he had replied and he's like, yes. And I go, all right. So I just shared a, a quick analysis. And then, you know, the next week we were meeting in person to talk about it because he didn't know. He had no idea. And so that just, you know, elevates this a little bit more that our work isn't done. There's still opportunities out there for you guys, or maybe that's part of your business plan is to leave that meat on the bone for the next investor. Because we're we're working on a property right now, and and the you know the new owner asked me, they're like, why didn't the previous owner do this? And I go, because they did everything else. They left this for you. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't even be interested in the property. So, if you see these types of fixtures certainly, you know, reach out to us and let us know. But one of the other leaks that I definitely want to point out um, that we see often in, you know, class C, class B properties are these tub diverters right here, this tub spout. This is really important. On these aging properties, these valve stems have trouble closing off. So sometimes they'll have a little consistent stream or drip and water is very destructive. So over a period of time, that water is just going to wear away at the finish on the tub. But not only that, when you go to turn the handle to engage the shower head, it's also going to be spitting out full force water out of that tub diverter. So when you've installed that new water sense certified shower head, and you're thinking that you're saving money, but you haven't addressed the leaky tub diverter, you're you're eroding the potential savings. 
So that's really where, you know, we help through our process is before any of our installations commence, we'll come in and complete what we call a full assessment, where we access 100% of the units and we document the fixture rated flow rate of all the toilets, all the shower heads, all the faucets. So we understand exactly what the baseline is that you are working with and where we're projecting to get you to. We also document all those front of the wall leaks so these tub diverters, where are those additional pieces where you can also shore up those, those water efficiency challenges? Mark, would you have ever thought that that was a 44-year-old toilet? I would have never imagined. Never. You never would have known that, would you? No. <laughs> we, we know that from, from the year of construction on the property. Yeah, wow. yeah. Oh, that porcelain, it throws you off. It, they just looks new. Yeah, it definitely does. Exactly. Mm. So Leslie, do you want to speak tying off here about, you know, what we need sure. to support the group here? Yeah, like I said before, Mark, you did a great job today, by the way, sending me what I needed. Um, the OM, the T12, that typically has what we need in it. But if you don't have those handy and you just want to text us or call us or email us, the property name and the address and the unit mix and the unit count really can help us get started. Now, if you want us to deep dive and you want to send us the water and the sewer bills, that's where Kelly and I can get really nerdy for you and kind of really break down um, the analysis. But really just to get you started, especially if we're doing this pre-LOI, um, we're going to be really conservative. So our, our projections are going to be um, even better than but that's our target. We love it. Like last week, for instance, Kelly and I had a conversation with an investor that signed up with us and the, what I had projected to him up front, because we don't go on site until we, um, until you believe and see what you like, and then you hire us, then we schedule a full assessment. So before that, what we're going off is the analysis. So we were able to show him after we, he, he hired us and we came on site and did the full assessment, we were able to show him a significant savings on based on what we had originally showed him and he was tickled he was really excited yeah. um so we just need um the basic information from you but mark today he provided me the om and the t12 we uh, conversed back and forth on just a few of the specifics and then i've been working on those for him so thank there you, you go thank you yeah great job yeah. So certainly want to answer any questions that anybody may have. You know, I know that all you guys are probably what, you know, toilet experts now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you will never, ever look at a toilet the same way ever again. You're absolutely right about that because <laughs> my, during my initial um, talk with Leslie a few months back, um, I was just uh, just mind blown, you know, with what she was teaching me. And I, I I will say this, and I know we're recording. I'm for one, I turn on the water faucet and I walk away, or I take long showers. I don't know. I'm 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 35 and I act like a typical <laughs> teenager, so I understand your plight, Kelly. And you know, just knowing all this information now, it's like okay. I'm just like, wow, all right, I need to find ways to save water. Even in, from my primary residence, you know, I just learned how to, you know, turn off the water, yell at my kids like, hey, make sure you turn off that water while you're brushing your teeth, yeah. guys. You're not paying the water, I am. So, you know, all these things is very, um, very important, especially on the multifamily side, learning how to conserve water. And I don't think enough investors out there, especially those who are coming into the space, know about this stuff. Yeah. So having people like yourselves out there, you know, educating us is very important. I appreciate you guys doing that. Absolutely. We have to operate for profit and, you know, be part of the impact investing. So this hits on all components of that, right? Definitely, definitely. And you don't have to yell at your kids anymore, Mark, if you just install an aerator <laughs> on your uh, on your faucet and then they can I, brush their teeth all they want and you can feel I definitely that. will. That is in the plan. <laughs> that is in the works. I <laughs> do have a question for you ladies, though. So mm -hmm. how long does it typically take for you guys to, you know, once you're hired and uh, have the basic analysis, now how long does it take for you or your team to actually 
complete the project, depending on the size of the, the, the asset, of course. Yeah, so good question. Um, so typically from the point of, you know, the date of contract and walking through the process of the full assessment and then the kickoff call for um, before the installation commences um, and then the completion of the installation, that's typically about a four week process. Okay. But what's, what's probably going to, uh, you know, surprise you guys is that like on our larger properties, like on the properties of like 150 bathrooms and more, we put our standard size crews out there and our standard size crews are going to access and install 50 to 60 bathrooms per day. So if you have a 200 unit property, we're going to have that installation completed within a week. But there's a lot of planning that goes into place to ensure that once we mobilize on the property, everything is successful. So all of that beginning work, that first two to three weeks, that's where all of the big work is occurring and the bulk of the time. Once that installation kicks off, I mean, it's like clockwork. And we're like, that's the easy part. You would think that that's the hard part, but it's really the easy part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is there, and do you guys have teams across the, the various states or do your, is your team uh, primarily based out of, I guess you guys are in Texas, so, and they travel across state lines to get the projects uh, completed? So we do have crews that are stationed in various markets across the country. However, um, about 90% of the projects that we install um, we use with our crews that are based in Houston. Um, they have a pod of um, about nine crews there and they drive to all of their installations, which I prefer because we're not at the mercy of the airlines canceling because once you notify that resident that you're gonna change out their toilet tomorrow, we better be there tomorrow. So we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about lost tools, luggage, they are traveling in their truck with their trailer. Then we have, so that's the other piece. They bring an open air trailer with them. So when they're removing the toilets, they're not just setting them on the sidewalk or in the hallway, right? Where that's a risk for the residents. So they're taking it straight to the trailer to keep a very, you know, I call it a lean, a very lean Six Sigma type uh, project. So it's continuous improvement all the way through. And most of our crews that are out there, they're all like little family pod extensions. It's like an uncle and cousins um, or a grandfather and maybe, you know, some, you know, grandchildren and cousins working together. So it's cute because they all go out there together as a family. They're invested in it. And then they're out there on the, you know, on the road traveling from job to job, and then they come back off for a couple of weeks, and then they just interchange them. Okay. Um, if anyone else have any questions, feel free to uh, unmute yourself, or else I'll keep asking questions all night. <laughs> hey, Kelly, uh, Kelly, Leslie, thank you very much. Great presentation. Thank um, you. I, thank you. Really, I, I, I took some screenshots of those slides. Those are nice slides. Um, Great. On a smaller property, on a small property, what is the cost? Is, is it is the cost saving? Is that great? Is it negligible? Is it worth? Is it worth? I know because obviously saving is it worth calling you? Or is there something you could we could you could do yourself? To, to, Call to, us for uh, every property. Hmm. So that's a fantastic question. So you know when. There has to be, you know, a, a break, right? Where it doesn't make sense cost effectively to do a full turnkey where you're bringing in a service provider like SAS for the full turnkey installation. That's typically, you know, around, we, we like to mobilize our crews out on properties that will have like, you know, 150 bathrooms or so. I'm working on some solutions to reduce that, however, we do evaluate all size properties. And then um, like if you have a 20 unit, we'll evaluate that for you because that's our personal mission is preserving water. 
And then we'll write up a solution for you. We can do product only. And then, um, and then maybe your on-site staff can take on a project, you know, because if it's only 20 toilets, they, they can install that. Usually when you get over 50 bathrooms, the cost of waiting, um, that's where it really makes sense to go ahead and hire professionals to come in and do that for you. But we'll walk you through that. But fantastic question. Mr. International, I like your name, by the way. Thank you very much. I got to hear the story behind that soon. <laughs> I'm going to I'll let you know. Maybe we need you on our team, Mr. International. Doors. Okay. You must check. Oh, you're uh, breaking up. Can you hear us? Yeah, you're, you're breaking up uh, a tad, Rachel. Can you hear us? You're still going in and out. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, I can. Go right ahead. Yeah. Okay. That'd be, I bet you Kelly's doing something. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh -huh. I'll try and then we'll see. Yeah. Um, a couple questions. So, um, how does one of those chefs feel to be um, resident? Uh oh. Did I break up? Yeah, you're going in and out again. Okay. Darn. Okay. Type it into That's the okay. chat. Type it into the yeah, chat. Yeah, for you, and yeah. I'll read it out. In the interim, does anyone else on the on the call have any further questions for Leslie and Kelly? So Rachel asked, "How how do the shower heads feel to the tenants?" Mm -hmm. Good, yeah, good question. So the shower heads that that we install. Um, actually use a special technology that is um, basically a, um, a compressed gasket inside of the shower head. So it's creating, it's called an, an equiforce. I'm going to get super nerdy on that. But basically what it's doing is it's creating an experience where it's reducing the amount of water, but it's created pressure behind the shower head so it's pushing out that water, making, making it do more with less. And by the way, I have like, I, I have long hair. It's a little more casual today, but I have long hair. I have a 1.25 gallon per minute shower head. That's what I use. Um, and, and I don't have to run around the shower to get the shampoo out of my hair. <laughs> That's the worst when we travel and I and I go to these hotels and the shower heads are awful and I'm like, oh, I should just carry my shower head with me in a wrench <laughs> and change it out. Awesome. She also asked uh, if we have a 48 and a 52 unit uh, in the same market, would you come and do both at the same time or is 100 too small? I think we can probably make that work. Okay. Um, you know, I'm working on a couple of so solutions. Leslie and I were just having a conversation earlier today with our director of operations. Um, and uh, I absolutely don't see why that's an issue. As long as we're able to um, mobilize the product for that property on each of the properties and not have to shuttle product back and forth, that's where the challenges are, is if we pull, you know, somebody off of a job to go run over here to go pick up more product, um, that slows the job down, but then it also removes our project supervisor from the crews, and we are very, very particular about the quality of the install. We want to have, you know, a final set of eyes on every single bathroom before we pull that door and close the lock. Great question and answer. Uh, Rachel proceeds with, if the bathrooms are going to be redone due to value add, uh, would you 
you would do them all. And then our crew, crews will come in and do the floors and showers and tub, or you just do the new stuff over the old stuff. Does it get damaged during the reno? Mm -hmm. So if, so our recommendation on that is, if you know that you're going to run a complete value add, changing out all the flooring, um, they're going to have to pull that toilet anyway to, to lay the new flooring. So it doesn't really matter at that point. Um, you know, my, my, in an ideal solution, have all your flooring done first and then have us come in and set the toilet. But most of our operators are not able to do that because they need to start seeing that improvement on NOI immediately. So we're coming in and I'd say over 80% of our projects, we're, we're putting in the toilets over the old flooring and then they'll just have to pull. When, when the flooring's done, it turns, then the toilets are just pulled and the flooring's laid down. Is that the same with the faucets and the shower heads? Yes, exactly. That is exactly correct. Mm. Okay. And you just can't yeah. have save. Yeah, I mean, we we will have those discussions on a property by property specific situation to see what makes sense. Um, you know, we we're working on a property right now in Atlanta. And we went out to go do the full assessment because they want, they want to do this project first. And, um, and the property has some significant challenges. And I made the recommendation back to them. I said, look, I know you guys want to do this phase one, but you guys really need to pull some of your other business plan forward first, because you could be setting yourself up for failure. Um, if, if we go down the path with this project first. So um, they're making, they're accelerating their plan so they can revert, so they can swap the business plan around. So that's the level of detail. We, we get into it with you. <laughs> awesome. Now does the, I'm not sure if you guys um, touched on this, but does the age of the building make a difference when it comes to considering water conservation? Yes, Leslie, do you want to answer that? It does. Um, the pro so the, the, the long and the short answer is it's going to make a difference for you if there are not currently high efficiency toilets in there. If we can come in to... Kelly, you can help me verify this. So like if we are coming to a property that is 2000s, early 2000s, there could be some opportunity there for us, mm -hmm. um, depending on um, depending on the age of the unit. So um, I would say reach out to us. It's going to be a property by, by property case. Sometimes you would think a lot of people assume that, oh, well, it's a 2000. I mean, we had a property a couple weeks ago that was like a 2012 Mm -hmm. um, property, but yeah. they had, didn't have, they had zero preventative maintenance on these toilets. So yeah. that although that these toilets were supposedly the high, more high efficient toilets, nobody had done any, um, maintenance on them. So the flappers were causing, uh, leaks in all of these units. So us coming in and installing a toilet that is, I would say, even though that toilet was high efficient, we were able to stall, install one that was half, wait, double the efficiency, um, but also help stop those internal leaks because our toilet that we utilize does not have a flapper. So therefore there is not going to be any preventive maintenance needed on it to change out those fixtures in the future. So I'm kind of going, I'm kind of going down a road, but I would say anything early 2000s, um, especially for the affordable housing, especially if you are um, an all bills paid, that's whenever we, we would ask that you engage us. Yeah. We typically will we typically will swipe right all day long on anything built before 2000. Mm -hmm. um, if it you know if it has not had any major interior upgrades, um, but don't don't discount you know mm -hmm. anything that is newer than that. Reach out to us and we will certainly take a look at it for you. Awesome, awesome. Does anyone else have any questions for for our guests this evening?
Wonderful. So Mark, what we'll do is we will email you a copy of this deck. So awesome. if you want to share that out with the group, you're more than welcome Ooh. to do so. And, you know, if there's anything that we can do to support along the way, answer any questions, we certainly want to be that resource. It's been a lot of fun. Sure. If we're you all over mind. LinkedIn. I was just going to say, Mark, yeah. sorry. We're all over LinkedIn. So if you want to find us on there, we try on a daily, weekly basis to just share education and share um, whatever we can to get people's awareness. So find us on there and call us, text us, email us, whatever's easiest for you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you, you yeah. definitely beat me to the punch. That was actually my next question, uh, oh. you know, where people can reach you, but awesome. Yeah. So one last question for the both of you before I, you know, before I let you ladies part ways. Chelly, why the potty princess? <laughs> Get that what is the, what is the story behind it? I mean, I know yeah. I've, I've read a, a slight blurb um, yeah. in your bio, but what is the story behind that? So I wish I could have been as creative uh, as uh, one of my colleagues was with, with coming up with this. This was actually a joke that now has turned into reality. So like three years ago, we were at a apartment association event in San Antonio. And one of my colleagues was introducing me to another multifamily operator and this was like during, this was after a long day of, of meetings and it was, it was time for happy hours. So everybody's all about the joke, plus he thinks he's a comedian. So, um, so he brings me over and he says, hey, you guys have to meet my friend, Kelly. She's the potty princess. And everybody in that circle just started cracking up laughing. And I just kind of, you know, blew it off. We, you know, talked about some other things. Then I saw those same individuals at another multifamily meetup a couple weeks later. Because, you know, this is a pretty tight group, right? And we're in the same region. And they're like, hey, I don't remember your name, but aren't you the potty princess? And then it just kind of, you know, continued on from there. Well, we really decided that, um, you know, through COVID, when we were, you know, seeking ways to push more of our education out there, because there, our company is a small business, so a lot of individuals don't recognize the SAS brand, so we decided to start utilizing hashtag the potty princess on a lot of our posts, and, um, and I had agreed that I'll take one for the team. I'll wear the badge of honor proudly. And I do. Um, my 12 year old thinks I'm a celebrity. And I just, so that just, you know, makes me all tickled. My 16 year old is appalled. She's like, don't ever talk about that in front of my, in front of my friends. But I wish I had a more exciting story, but that's how it evolved. And, and we stuck with it. Understood. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> and Leslie, how come no, no hashtag for you? Well, we're waiting for someone to get creative to come up with an idea because, I mean, how do you beat the potty princess at this point? <laughs> someone the other day told me I was the heiress of aerators, and I'm like, okay, that might work. <laughs> so challenge, um, challenge for so everybody. we're taking, yeah. Yep. So, and, so that's what we joke about is once once we crown her with, with her hashtag, then we're going to have to pay out royalties. So, <laughs> let's, <laughs> so let's, put, let's put a fund together. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, ladies, I don't want to hold you. I know we're at uh, slightly a half over the hour. I want to, again, to thank you ladies for taking time out of your busy schedule yeah. to educate us on water conservation. Absolutely. Um, for all those who have, uh, who, did, who didn't get a chance to hear from you guys, uh, I will definitely post um, Leslie's and um, Kelly's information in the yeah. show notes for this. And feel free to reach out to her guys. Uh, she, they have great information. And again, as you mentioned, pre-LOI, just send them over your T12, your unit mix, and uh, other viable information, which has passed my mind right now. But they will definitely do a yeah. free analysis and give you, um, and let you know how you can um, save money on your water and sewer bill. So ladies, again, thank you so much for your help. Yes. I, I thank you so much for educating us. I appreciate the time and uh, I look forward to speak, speaking with you gals again in the near future. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you. for having us. You guys have a great evening.
Likewise, thank you.